What have you seen and immediately regretted seeing it? I was shown a video of a woman stretching out her asshole, filling it with cereal and milk, and another girl eating it with a spoon. Booty loops. When I was younger my mom had the stomach flu. I was the only one at home and she yelled for me to bring her a bath bucket. I came into her bedroom as she was trying to make it to the toilet. I passed her the bath bucket. She bent over to hurl, and machine gun sprayed shit all over her white bedspread. My mom is a large woman, and it was very unpleasant. Walking home during the middle of the day I notice a car with its emergency flashes on parked in an alley. I look and see this old dude squatting next to the car. At that very moment I saw the turd plop out. I should have minded my own business. Seeing my cat with an infected gaping hole in her stomach and a chunk of the side of her tail gone after having been missing for three weeks. She just walked in the back door looking all starved and dehydrated like there was nothing wrong but she kept lying down to lick herself and I saw crusted blood on her tail. We took her to the vet she somehow completely recovered and is doing really well surprisingly. Much tamer than the rest of the stuff on this thread but still wanted to share. Watched my dad die from an aneurysm. Happened while he was at work and had to get life flighted to the next hospital over due to space and whatnot. He was on life support by the time I got there and nothing could have saved him so my mom had him taken off. It was a surreal. Remembering it now is like it happened last night. I hung out with them like a week before and would have been fine that being my last memory of him. But instead he was in a private room that was cream colored. The family was around. I watched the monitor tracking his vitals and then back at him. With all these hoses, needles, and tubes all over him. It was strange to see him in this state. My dad was a big man at 6'3 and 280 pounds always been the standard for what a tough guy was. He worked in construction and was a race car junkie. You would almost think he could punch through a brick wall down a bottle of Crown Royale and ride a bull using his legs only. I watched as his heart rate slowed down in what was surely minutes but felt like hours. It was an agonizing experience to watch but I was frozen in place silently praying that he would just wake up. Then that warning arose from the machine that he was no longer there then seeing that final twitch in his body. That broke me as I thought for a second he was waking and trying to struggle for air but it wasn't. I have never experienced death like that before or since. A couple good things though. He was a die-hard Dale Earnhardt fan and passed in the room next to where apparently Dale Sr. passed. He taught me many valuable lessons. And weirdly so I received a voicemail the day prior from him that while I don't have any longer I'll never forget his words. Miss you pops. Two come to mind. Goats are gross. Was not prepared and I vaguely remember being like 14 and finding a tentacle hentai vid where the girl gets torn into a bloody paste or something right after climax. I just remember 14, Yomi going from confused masturbation to terror and feeling sick to my stomach in moments. One of my students passed this past August. He went through septic shock in the hospital several times before it was finally too much. He had cerebral palsy and was confined to a wheelchair but was always a happy kid, laughing and smiling. At the funeral, when I went up to see him, his makeup was awful. He was clearly still very purple, and he was so bloated, though I know the makeup couldn't cover that. He didn't look like himself. He didn't even look very human anymore. I've never seen someone look like that at a funeral. It was the worst thing I had ever seen. It was him, but it just wasn't him. I cried for a long time. A decapitation. I'd seen numerous simulated decapitations in film before. Guillotine. Single swing of a sword. This wasn't like that. I believe it was an ISIS video with a hostage on his knees and a guy standing behind him with an oversized butcher knife, small machete. I figured it was going to be one quick swing of the blade and off pops the guy's head. But no, the executioner holds the blade to the guy's throat and starts sawing at it. I'm pretty sure that the knife hadn't ever been sharpened because it was ripping through his throat and muscle and bone. There was a lot of blood. The expressions on the victim's face are beyond description. I don't know. It might have just been some pretty elaborate special effects. But it was about 25 years ago and FX that realistic just weren't widely available. A guy on Twitter who f his vacuum cleaner and a bitch eating a mouse alive while being dressed like a cat this is her fetish WTF. A dude putting on goggles saying he's diving into that pussy then proceeded to shove his entire head into someone's vagina. 
When my wife gave birth to our first child, it was an emergency C-section after 32 hours of labor. While the surgery was going on, they put up this curtain between her top half and her bottom half. And although I was scrubbed down to be in the room with her, they advised me to not peek over the curtain. It wouldn't hurt if I did. It just wasn't a good idea to. I decided to take a look right before they got our son out. It was likely the most horrific thing I've ever seen in my life. They take the entire uterus out. Take the baby out of the uterus and then put the uterus back in. Holy shit it was like looking into the mouth of madness. Just after my husband and I split up I was going through our videotapes to find a blank one to record something. It was a video of my husband having sex with someone that was certainly not me. I cried. That gif of the baby stroller rolling onto the subway tracks. That haunted me for a year until I read the story of the baby miraculously surviving it unharmed. My mom f one of her clients on the couch and the dude had asked her if I wanted to join. Five-year-old me ran back to bed. This happened long time ago. 30 years actually. It was a regular occurrence at my house since my mom was a prostitute and stripper to bring random men back home. She finally stopped after she got arrested for prostitution when I was seven and went to jail for a month. I knew about sex and what my mom did when I was five so it wasn't so much as a shock. But to see particular dudes take an interest in me was pretty shocking. Some were nice about it, wanted to buy me toys, etc. It's all in the past now. My mom is long gone and my stepdaddy's a non existent except one. He was the one that saved me from my mom. F excuse me. My girlfriend at the time doing another dude. This was 10 to 11 years ago. After dating for a couple years, I decided to move my girlfriend into my apartment with me. The first weekend after she moved in, we were at the pool when a neighbor of mine, a guy I'd seen in the halls a few times, came in with a couple of his buddies. I caught the guy looking at my girlfriend a few times but, not being the jealous type, I wasn't bothered. But that night, my girlfriend made a comment about how she sort of liked getting a little attention. I took that as a hint I needed to step it up and pay a little more attention to her. And that's what I did. Things were going well. A couple months later, I'm coming home from work and as I drive past the leasing office, I see my girlfriend and that guy talking to one another by the mailboxes. She walks in with the mail and I ask her, jokingly, if she had a nice chat with her admirer, and here's where alarm bells should have gone off she lied to me, flatly denied that she saw or spoke to him. I reassured her I was only kidding and she just kept reiterating that I might have seen someone talking to him but it wasn't her. Instead of dragging it out into a fight, I just let it go. A month or so passes. I'm sitting at my desk at work eating my lunch and I dribble electric yellow hot mustard on my shirt. I had a big presentation later that day and I couldn't go in looking like pig but fortunately, I lived close to work so I could just swing by and change real quick. First thing I notice when I get home is my girlfriend's car we had assigned parking and our spots were right next to one another. I remember thinking, like, wow she must be super sick to come home from work and not tell me about it. When I opened the door to my apartment, I could hear that unmistakable sound of pelvis clapping against butt cheeks but my brain couldn't comprehend it. I guess. My bedroom was on the back side of my apartment, at the end of a long hallway. They had left the door open and from the end of the hallway, I could see, in full view, my neighbor absolutely knocking the bottom out of my girlfriend in the doggy style position, and she was losing it. She was pretty vocal whenever we had sex but she was making some guttural, tribal noises for this dude. I stood there frozen, just watching, for the better part of three minutes. Finally, he said, hey, roll over, I'm gonna come and when she was repositioning herself, she glanced down the hallway and saw me standing there and, there was this weird moment we had where we locked eyes with one another, both paralyzed in disbelief. That was the last moment I felt close to her. I don't really remember much of the racket that ensued. I remember it was loud and there was a lot of scurrying about. The guy who was screwing her went and locked himself in the bathroom and told her he wouldn't come out until after I had left I was much bigger than him and could have easily clobbered him if I had that inclination but I didn't. She got so worked up that she started dry heaving which was a thing she did. I walked out to my car and went back to work and gave my presentation in a mustard stained shirt. I ended up getting a promotion off the strength of that presentation.
My daughter showed me a pic and before I could look away it was burned into my memory. I cringed and shuddered for two weeks after seeing it. I'm guessing that it's because of a trypophobia feeling. It was a pic of a bald man's head. He had had hair plugs put in. All of the plugs became infected and the hair fell out. Rows and rows of tiny pustules all over his head. A woman having sex on a couch in a hotel room. And the guy reaches over to the table to grab a plastic bag and chokes her to death by putting it over her face. Years later I found out it was fake and it takes a hell of a lot longer than they showed to actually kill someone that way. But it f***ed me up for a long time. Couldn't sleep because the image of her struggling for life was burned in my brain. Angel's melancholy. Not because of the gore or hardcore sex but because it took 2 hours and 40 minutes of my life. It's one of those movies where you think it's over but then it just drags on and on, and on. I have a thing where I need to finish any movie I decide to watch. Regardless of how much I hate it, I grew bored about halfway through and started playing on my phone and checking how much was left on the video's progress bar. Watched a co-worker get hit in the head from a 25-pound piece of metal moving way too quickly and the first aiders trying to give him CPR. Never saw death before that and hoped to never see it again. Watching someone die in their 20s is something I wouldn't want anyone else to experience either.